Hello, my name is Tyler Watkins. Along with the rest of my class, we are going to be presenting um, volunteer, is volunteerism dead within Huntington County? We've noticed a trend in our class, and it hasn't been one for the better. Volunteerism is steadily declining, and even more unsettling than that, the average firefighter is now 40 years old. Our class, PS299, with the assistance of our instructor, Charlotte Ridge, and the director of Huntington County's EMS, Adam Miller, have been working diligently throughout the semester to find the underlying problem and perhaps find potential solutions for this volunteer problem we are experiencing. Now, with, this, with our qualitative and quantitative data that we have gathered from high schools to the college to local policymakers and current volunteers, we're going to take you through identifying the problem, how it is currently being dealt with, our suggestions for solutions, and then a conclusion which will sort of wrap everything up and talk to you a little bit about our qualitative and quantitative data again. Now I'll hand it over to Nick, who's going to explain his data for you. Okay, so um, Adam supplied us with a survey of 216 um, EMS fire um, disaster relief and fire rescue volunteers in Huntington County, Fulton County, Center County, Bedford County, um, just geographically speaking, Central Western, and rural Pennsylvania. Um, about 51% of uh, these uh, respondents said that they also had family that volunteered and that influenced their decision to volunteer. And 82% said that they volunteered because they wanted to help others or because they felt some sort of sense of civic duty. Um, about a third, roughly, began at 16 to 21 years of age and about another third began around 36 to 55 years of age. Now, I know that 16 to 21 years is pretty young, um, but when, as Tyler said, the average um, firefighter and EMS volunteer in the survey is about 41 years old, that figure um, becomes a bit of a problem because they've been in for almost 18 years on average, which means that they're getting old. Um, not only that, but 85% are married, and a sizable portion of them have dependent children. Um, so of these 216 dependents, about 164 of them, which is over three quarters, have a full-time job. Um, about 19%, that was 40 respondents, said they were unemployed or retired. Um, and the average survey respondent is somewhere around high school diploma level or some college associate's degree, something like that. Um, now to kind of paint the underlying picture that is obviously out of Huntington County Emergency Management's control, I um, pulled a bit of um, economic data from different counties in Pennsylvania. So I, um, I looked at the unemployment per capita income and uh, land area of Allegheny County, which is Pittsburgh, and Delaware County, which is a suburb of Philadelphia. Um, and the first problem is on the right. You can see of Pennsylvania's 46,000 mile or square mile land area, and it's 12 million residents, well, actually almost 13 million residents. Um, when you look at Allegheny County, for example, that's about 1.6% of the land mass. Huntington County is even more percent of that land mass. It's almost 900 square miles, but it has about 1 20th of the population to service, which means 1 20th of the taxes and actually it's even less because when you look 
at the average per capita income by county, Huntingdon County, with its 9% unemployment rate, is almost $10,000 less per person than Allegheny County, and it's almost $12,000 less than Delaware County, and um, you know, similar numbers for U.S. and Pennsylvania averages. So there's really no tax base to work with. And even with that, uh, these people go out and they volunteer anyway. Um, so one of the questions from Adam Surrey was volunteering in EMS is an accepted and supported practice by my primary employer. 182 people agreed with the statement, but when I looked at the statistics in the survey for the actual paid leave that their employer will permit them to have, 82%, so 174, said that their employer won't give them any more than five, anywhere between zero and five hours of paid leave um, per month to actually go out and volunteer for the fire service or the emergency management. And this figure is actually skewed even more because it doesn't factor in the amount of people that are self-employed that can decide for themselves when they're going to not work and go in and volunteer. Um, and yet, over half of these people manage to donate more than 10 hours per week, you know, a part-time job's worth of hours per week to, you know, their communities to, um, to be on call. Um, so this is what they're up against. Um, keep, keeping in mind the, uh, the lack of tax base and the poor economic conditions in the area, 77% um, said that they've had to spend their own resources to become certified to volunteer, and that consists of you know upwards of $1,800 of um, costs for courses and training. Um, it's almost 200 hours before you even get certified, and you have to maintain that every year, which is just a, you know a constant perpetual cycle of uh, spending your own resources if there's no reimbursement by the borough or your township. Um, and Huntington County spent almost eight hundred thousand dollars last year in its fire er, in two thousand eleven in its fire expenses, which is a uh, pretty astronomical when you consider the percentage of um, staff that is not paid. Costs significantly more than seven thousand dollars just to outfit a single firefighter. Um, and the average fire engine, which Huntington's are becoming dated, are more than uh, half a million dollars on average now. So what can we infer from this data? Um, there's no tax base, and that's the first problem, but unfortunately that's not something that Huntington County or um, any Pennsylvania rural areas can really affect themselves just because that's not their area. Um, another issue is that volunteerism is low because younger people are leaving the area when there's when there are no financial resources and when the outlook in the area for people that have dependents are not good, they need to leave. Um, not only that, but the sense of community is not good either and there's just a generational shift in um, the personal value that's instilled in young people for what it means to be a volunteer. Um, when you tie that all together with the resource vacuum from areas like Harrisburg and State College that do have money um, yeah, and where they have paid staff, whereas we only have volunteers out here, and that just exacerbates the issue even worse. Um, so I'm forced to conclude then, I guess, that we can't really take a top down approach to this. Um, with such a limited paid administrative staff, we need to start looking at the other end, which is the grassroots, the churches, charities, the schools, and try to change the attitudes of um, residents out here and make it apparent how much of a problem it is and just how important and valuable it is to have volunteers. So I'm going to hand it over to Beth.
numbers can only speak so much. So I took a look at the actual volunteers and I asked them if they saw a problem. Um, the overwhelming response was that yes, they did. Some of them told me in fewer words, some of them told me in quite a bit more. However, they all see the trend. Fewer, older, and less experienced volunteers. You have a loss of community, and that there's several factors that can go into that, um, not including, not limited to, um, the loss of the generation and the generational gap. And fire, the other thing that they said was that firefighters are becoming professional well, fundraisers, which is not what they were paid to do. And as more people are finding that out, they're not volunteering. Uh, they also, I also got them to, t to tell me about some popular misconceptions. Um, I've, I heard many, many stories where they don't, people don't just don't understand that it's a volunteer staff. It's not paid. We don't pay for our EMT or most of our EMT services, or for our for our firefighters. Um, there's some very sad stories that consist of why weren't you here faster as the main line that these men and women get when they volunteer and try to help people. Um, one of those problems that's exacerbating the issue is the coverage area. Going back to what Nick said, is that we have a lot of area and very little people. Each one of, each one of, this is, that's Huntington County, and each one is a borough in those lines. Each fire department is responsible for that borough. Those boroughs are huge. They don't have the resources or the necessary manpower to cover those, which can lead to problems. The same goes for the ambulance services. Our EMT services poss possibly even more important because they're dealing with people's lives, um, not just their houses. Um, it, ambulances are expensive, fire trucks are expensive, and we can't afford to pay for our staff. Um, the other important thing that I thought we should look at was the, what what the volunteers have dealt with over time. There are cases, I was told multiple, multiple stories of people who can't afford to have a job. Like, there's, no, there's not a lot of job opportunities here, so the jobs have moved to Lewistown. And so people who live here are driving an hour's time to get to work and then driving an hour back. By the time they get home, they're too tired to work. Um, some of these people still volunteer, and they don't have a personal life. Their expecta the expectations are higher of the public as well, which can be good and bad. Um, this has caused people to not want to volunteer as much because they see the volunteers in a negative light. I'll end this for our Devin. So you're probably sitting there wondering, well, why exactly should I care about this? And you should care because this problem is not just affecting the current volunteers or the staff, such as Adam Miller, but it also affects you. Um, having a lack of new and young volunteers, such as volunteers in general, uh, greatly impacts the quality of service and is given by the emergency, the emergency services, um, and that does not impact uh, you as well, and the rest of the Huntington County community. Uh, lack of volunteers means slower emergency response times, which then uh, results in the potential for greater health issues. Um, it could be you or a family member, a friend, or neighbor who is having a heart attack or a stroke or whose house is on fire, and in those cases, every minute is crucial. And since we already live, since Huntington County is a rural area, um, that already gives slower response times, but then lack of volunteers just makes that a greater issue. Um, and there's also the problem that there's, there's a potential increase in taxes. Um, because of the lack of volunteers, then maybe the emergency services have to be outsourced to a private company, and of course they need to be paid somehow, which would then result in higher taxes. So, in all, that this is really a problem that affects not just the emergency services, but also the general public of uh, Huntington County and that everyone should be aware of. Now I'll pass it over to Jerry.
These problems have currently, people are currently attempting to address these problems. Um, there are several solutions right now. Um, one is the Community Emergency Response Training, or CERT. Basically, the idea is to train just civilians to be better prepared for emergencies, and they do uh, basic first aid, uh, I believe in terms of light search and rescue, um, simpler emergency tasks, as opposed to doing the more complicated ones that will be dealt with by fire or EMT. Uh, police, fire, and EMT also work together if times call for it. Many firefighters are trained EMTs, and many EMTs are trained firefighters. Uh, even if that's not their primary job, they can switch around and do it if they have to. Some of the larger communities, like uh, Huntington Borough, have switched to paid services. Uh, while this does solve the volunteer problem, it is expensive and not possible to do everywhere. And lastly, there has been an advertising push to get more volunteers. The Allegheny Mountain Firefighter Initiative, for one, does a lot of advertising here. They have billboards, they have websites, internet ads, they're at Mayfest, they have TV and radio ads. If it is a method of communication, they're trying it. Um, and for some of our solutions, I will pass it back to Deb. So one of the many solutions is what uh, Geneata College can do. And having Geneata College in Huntington County, uh, it's really a great asset. Um, the fact that there is always several hundred students coming in every year, all with different interests and different backgrounds. And that can really um, impact the uh, volunteer issue that we do have. Um, in my research, I spoke with Jessica Maxson, who is the Interim Director of the Community Service Office. Um, and with her, with her job comes the fact that she organizes all the different um, acti activities that the Community Service Office does, as well as gets in uh, contact with all the organizations that um, are in the area and that need the help. And speaking with her, she did mention the fact that Adam Miller never really came to her. Uh, meeting, so she was unaware that there was an issue. Um, but with the better communication between the office and uh, the EMS, of course that problem could be resolved. Um, with the community service office, there's also the Bonner Leaders Program, which is a specific and elite group of students, uh, one per class year, um, where they are sought out by the community service office because of exceptional work they may have done in uh, high school with volunteering. Um, and then they are asked to apply, and then they are get, um, approved through a board. And then they take on these big projects every year. And I know currently that they're doing a garden in Huntington County just kind of to help make it a little bit nicer. Um, and then there's also the day of service that the office does. And that happens about once a month, maybe twice a month. And they pick a specific organization in town or in the county that kind of needs the help right away. And they organize a day of service. And that, um, any student can go to. And so it just kind of raises awareness of some of the issues that are in the community. Um, another potential solution is with the clubs. There are several different clubs on campus, and another one could be uh, that is specific for fundraising. It has been mentioned that a lot of the volunteers currently spend a lot of their time just fundraising. And so maybe get asking a group of students on campus to form a club that deals with fundraising they could then take that uh, workload off the volunteers and just kind of uh, focus on themselves. Um, in my research also, I did, vol I did uh, question several current Juniata students, and all of them did say that they volunteered in high school, whether it was for a requirement or if it was uh, just because they felt like it. So there is the um, volunteering like spark that are, that, uh, are in the Juniata students. Um, and to kind of help Get that spark out there is um, maybe offering specific classes that, uh, for students to, obtur to obtain credit for service, and those are specific, uh, specifically called service learning classes. Um, currently, the community service office offers um, students that they volunteer 120 hours and they log all that um, in their program that they will be given a uh, transcript notation for graduate school or employment. Um, but that's appealing to some students, but a lot of them do want the credit to kind of help move their graduation along. And that gives the service learning classes. And those are classes specifically geared toward helping a specific organization 
and there's a specific uh, curriculum done. And so um, Jessica Maxson did say that there is uh, service learning in all the core requirements here at Juniata. Um, but um, she's always willing to be open to more. And if maybe Adam Miller spoke to a specific faculty member to get involved, uh, we could have that. I know a lot of the um, biology and pre-med students would definitely take this volunteering in like the emergency services as a great opportunity for potential career uh, opportunities as well. Um, and then another uh, solution would just be the greater recognition uh, for service done. Um, currently, there's a little bit of a debate with uh, honor boards given at graduation. Uh, Bonner leaders, and as well as the other students who met the 120 hours requirement, used to be given cert, uh, specific purple cords. Um, but that's recently been taken away because the school uh, has a new policy where uh, cords can only be for academic service. So I feel, um, I know Jessica said that she's really working to fight that, but I feel like if you kind of had a community push against that, that would help get the administration to move along in that, uh, on that. There's also the awards given. Um, they give specific uh, awards given at our convocation, which is the award, spring award ceremony, as well as the May Day brunch, which is a specific uh, brunch in May, of course, that um, kind of honors uh, a lot of the work that the students have done. Um, so all in all, just improving the communication between the campus and uh, the community. President Troja has mentioned that he's really trying to push that since he's, he's come here, and of course, uh, they should definitely help with those uh, efforts. So now I'll pass it along to uh, Tyler. So I definitely agree with Devin that there is an influence that Juniata can make or that they could help with. And yes, there was some stuff that the community can do as well that Jared will tell you in a little bit. But me being a recent high school graduate of Southern Huntington, I'm a little biased. So I wanted to look at the real grassroots. I interviewed high school students. and. Since it's not a simple problem that we couldn't fix yet, I asked the students, why do you think young people aren't volunteering for emergency response services? 29% said they have not even heard of it. Now, I understand that there's been advertising going on, but if there's been a lot of money put into advertising, why have the students not heard of it? Why is the school not given enough information about it. So if we're going to allocate money for firefighter awareness and to encourage volunteerism, why do we not start in schools where we can get 16 year olds, 17 year olds who are willing to do it for a few years before they end up moving out in search of jobs, in search of a career. If our economy cannot, cannot keep these children here, why don't we grasp them while, while we still have them? To move on to the next bullet point, kids want fun. Now, 29% uh, said kids are lazy. And I understand that's maybe a generational gap. And that is something uh, our older generations are saying. Kids have no sense of community. Uh, they don't want to give back. Well, we have to face the music when it comes to this issue. There may be a loss in community, a sense of community. However, we can't fix that. However, what we can do is we can take the information we know now and still deal with the bigger problem of volunteerism. So what I think is tying in kids are lazy with volunteerism isn't fun. Although kids may be lazy, kids do like fun. If there is some aspect we can push a volunteerism, any aspect of EMT, firefighter, that is fun, I believe it's worth to explore if we can get just one more volunteer. And lastly, kids have no time. Now this is, this is closer to home because I was a football player, I had FFA, I did student government, class president. I understand the struggles, especially as a college student now you don't have a lot of time. However, if we want to increase this, or increase the students' time, why do we not explore the option of letting students out maybe one period a day? 45 minutes, 
to go to their local firehouse or ambulance service. I know it's southern, there's five minutes either way. Or Bazonia or Three Springs both have a firehouse that would be more than willing to have kids for just 45 minutes a day if that's all it takes. However, the high schools need to explore its options. So, just to go into some more, some more uh, possible solutions to this problem, simple incentives. You'd be amazed what people would do just for acknowledgement or recognition. Graduation cords, certificates, and again, just other little acknowledgements. Rather than putting money into advertisements that these kids have not heard of, because if that's who we want to target to solve this problem of 40-year-old firefighters, why do, we not, why do we not take money from advertising and invest in something as simple as graduation reports or five-cent piece of paper to help give these kids acknowledgement? And something I found uh, very funny. All schools in this county require some form of community service to graduate, some minimum hour requirement. The overall, what I've found is, of the five schools, all of them require a minimum of 15. And that's not including Tussie Mountain, which has parts of its school district in Huntington. So just take the five school districts that are mainly based in Huntington County. Only one of them offer incentive for more volunteer hours. Juniata Valley is the only one that offers students cords for 25 hours or more. And due to that, there are eight students that I've talked to that are planning on reaching that number just to receive the cord. As compared to two or three volunteers that I've heard of within Southern Huntington. So again, I, I'm not going to make assumptions on that basis, but I think it speaks pretty clearly for itself that why do not schools explore this option if it can increase volunteerism? And lastly, the thing I want to touch on is Adam talked a little bit about a potential vote tech or career integ integrated program. At the HCCTC, tech, or the vote tech, whatever how kids call it in high school, it's the vote tech. There are, there's a path for nurses for those wishing to go into the medical field. Could it not be easy to tie in an EMT class with our requirements and a nursing program? Can we knock can we knock two birds with one stone? Or one yeah, the analogy. Anyway, but you see what I'm saying. If we could take advantage of that while we have kids there, it gives them incentive to work for EMTs, and that gives us just that much that much more time we have them and can use them as volunteers before they go off. And if they happen to work at JC Blair, or some other medical center close to home, that's great. Now they have the certification they need to volunteer. And Adam also talked about a potential EMS track or something of that sort. That's great. I, I highly encourage Huntington County Career Technology Center to explore that option. It's all, this is all about getting the kids while we can. We have to start at the grassroots level to take a preemptive strike to this problem. And now I'll let Jared talk to you about what the community is going to do, or what they're working on, and what they could do. As I mentioned before, uh, the, or I should say that the Huntington County is larger than just Juniac College and high school. There is a community out there who can help with volunteering. As I mentioned before, the uh, CERT program can be a useful avenue to get new volunteers. It, it, it requires about a quarter of the time that firefighter training does, so it is far less scary than dedicating to one of your life to become a firefighter. Um, you can also um, take people who would be interested in more training from CERT and push them into a full firefighter or EMT track. And even if they don't, you still have someone who can help in an emergency if need be. Um, also, paper rewards. While the paper themselves the paper rewards themselves aren't inherently valuable, people value the recognition that comes with that certificate or 
photo or card, and that'll make it valuable to them and something they want to strive for. Even if it's, as, um, as said before, a five cent piece of paper. Also partnering with some of the local churches and religious groups, uh, they could perhaps get a large quantity of volunteers to all volunteer at the same time and provide encouragement to them. I believe Adam also discussed establishing some sort of daycare system in some of the churches. And lastly, they have a lot of space to perhaps do training or banquets. Um, there, uh, you have to be a bit careful with the churches. You have to, since the EMA is government, you have to offer it to all churches equally. Um, and not focus in on one particular group. Um, also, just dedicated fundraising volunteers. Firefighters spend as much time fundraising almost as they do drilling or maintaining equipment, which is, and they don't really want to be fundraising, they want to be fighting fires, that's what they signed up for. And this is a problem across the board with all firefighters and EMTs. Only 22 out of the 200 out of 212 respondents did not need to raise funds. Um, and also some free swag for the people who complete the programs. Um, food, t-shirts, hats. It is another way to recognize those who volunteer their time. And unlike a certificate or a photo which might be locked in someone's office, this is very public and can help advertise the EMT and firefighting services in Huntington County, and perhaps encourage people to volunteer. And now I will pass it to Nick and Beth to conclude. Okay, so we have um, we have investigated uh, <clears throat> pretty much all of the uh, areas that can be investigated to um, you know, diagnose the problem of volunteerism, um, and we've concluded basically just that there's fading volunteerism. And um, that's really a problem in younger generations because there's some sort of gap, something missing in our generation um, that exists in the generation that is currently out volunteering for Huntington County and um, a bunch of other rural PA counties to keep us safe and be on call whenever accidents happen. Um, like Jared, and Tyler explained there are plenty of ways that we can bolster um, kind of the intrinsic value, the personal intrinsic value of volunteerism in ways that aren't expensive. You know, printing paper for recognition has value that speaks beyond its cost of you know, two cents a sheet. Um, graduation cords are certainly something that people strive for and they're not expensive either. And doing that is um, not, only, not only would that help to diagnose uh, volunteers and problems in the area, that would build the community too, and that circumvents the economic issues that I outlined earlier that we can't really fix. Um, that's just a problem we'll have to deal with. Um, and since the county strapped for financial resources, um, you know, that's really the reason why they need to be involved, just because it's not reasonable to expect an area like this where only a tiny handful of um, emergency management staff are actually paid. Um, it's unreasonable to expect them to be contacting the state or um, you know, FEMA or other media emergency management agencies like that and asking for funds that they're probably just not going to get because they just don't have the manpower to do that. And they're just kind of spinning their wheels in the mud when really it would be more effective to start in the community. There's not much more to say, really. You have to start in the community, and as we've outlined in almost every slide, it comes down to cash or money. Um, even the volunteers that I interviewed had said, you know, it's the economic situation. So while we can't control economics, um, we've given you our solutions. 
Thanks for listening.